And now, TSPN is proud to present Art and Culture with Kathleen Ball on TSPN. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Art and Culture with Kathleen Ball. Um, we have a guest tonight, and we're going to be discussing uh, artwork and history of art and what's inspired on the creation of art. So we have a local Amador County artist and a dear friend of mine. We've known, uh, God, we met probably 20 years ago or so. Yep. Uh, in Sutter Creek. And with no further ado, I'm going to introduce my friend Thomas Bell. So, uh, Thomas, originally when we met, we had uh, you had a place in Sutter Creek, right? Right. <clears throat> and uh, we had... Uh, we had, uh, who was it? We had another friend over there at the time, too, um, that was doing, uh, doing the Indian heads, Greg Connell. Right. And so you and I and Greg Connell, we had the, I had the gallery, and we were pouring bronze and doing all kinds of experimentation. Yeah. And, you know, all sorts of things at that time. So, um, so we go back a few years. It's been a, it's been a few minutes. Yeah. <laughs> a few minutes. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, give us a little background on the history. You graduated in, uh, you, you did have some formal education in, in Florida, right? Well, I went uh, to, I got out of the service and went to uh, Edinburgh State College in Pennsylvania. In Pennsylvania, <clears throat> They had okay. a, a pretty good art department. I researched around a bit. And I majored in ceramics <clears throat> at Edinburgh. And then I finished uh, my, my four years there, and I ended up, uh, I went down to Key West, Florida for a week to visit a friend and ended up staying 12 years. And I, yeah. I taught down there yeah. in the community college. And then I had an opportunity to go up and get my master, my master of fine arts at uh, West Virginia University. Right. So I, I was on a teaching assistantship up there. Right. So then I went up to West Virginia. Right, right. And from there, <clears throat> let's see, I was deciding where to go after I finished my master's work, and I all of a sudden realized I'd be warmer if I crawled in my freezer. <laughs> so I came to California, and that's been 35 years or so. Right, right. And then you migrated up to Amador County and joined us up here. What? Was it's it been 20, 20, 22 years or so. Yeah, about 22 like years. So, so we met, I think, was it 1992 or something, or 93, yeah, I think it was. Yeah, art has a, you know, when you become or you're born an artist, I think it's, it's something that is not even really a choice. I think you're born an artist or not, but um, it has a way of sort of directing your life. <laughs> mm, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> you end up in the strangest places sometimes. But, um, you know, like you're talking about moving from different states and whatnot and, you know, how mm -hmm. that drew you. And then, you know, we, we've talked before, um, and, you you know, you mentioned that what your ideal goal was is, is to maintain a studio space that um, involved very little out, you know, outgo, overhead. Mm -hmm. so that you could really focus on your artwork as opposed to teaching. So I thought that was, you know, that was a really interesting concept because that was something I struggled with myself as a professional artist. You either are making money or you're, right. or you're in your studio. And, and that was one right. of the reasons I closed <clears throat> the gallery was yeah. so. I was spending so much time booking shows and being involved in the gallery that it was taking me away from the actual artwork. So can you talk a little bit about that? Well, one of my earliest lessons that I that I learned was to, uh, if I was going to be an artist, <coughs> I, I and didn't want to play the the game shaking the cocktails and doing right. the whole thing, right. was uh, to to learn how to be happy on ver not a lot of money, right. <laughs> and that helped a lot because yeah. there were a lot of lean times in there, but uh, yeah. basically, you know, you. You you do what you have to do, and right. so in the studio I get easily sidetracked. So I'm I'm casting uh, some metal, and then all of a sudden I'm etching with acid over here, and then I'm uh, 
right. working with uh, clay or foam or you something. Know. Right. Yeah. So mm -hmm. you know, it's it's. I realized at one point it was hard to actually make a living unless you were somewhat had a recognizable style or a, a different craft that you did, mm -hmm. and that's when I stuck with for myself the the angels, the, the earth, earth angels. angels. Right. But, uh, Which we're going to see in just a few minutes, folks, as a matter of fact. Um, the Earth Angels was a brilliant, I, I, I really thought it was sort of a, a brilliant idea that you came up with. And, and you actually cast, uh, my daughter was one of the yeah. first people that you cast. Well, they, they came out in a strange way. I was, uh, my degrees were in ceramics, and I, after my master's I was just fed up with, <laughs> tired of leaving kilns in my wake and so forth. Right. So I wanted to cast some bronze. I wanted to pour glass. I wanted to play around. One thing I wanted to do was carve stone. <clears throat> so I got a set of chisels and hopped on some stone, started carving away, right. learning how to cut stone. When I felt good about it, I started, I preconceived a bust, a female bust. Right, right. So I got my stone and I started working on the, on the face yeah. first. And, um, I'd put it aside and, you know, look at it for a while, mm -hmm. do other works and stuff, come back a week later and work some more. And one day I looked over at it and it was done. And it was just the face on the rock. But that's yes. how they that's how they came about kind right. of. So right. it was, sometimes you have to be prepared to catch. When, things don't always turn out as you preconceive them. Exactly. And yeah. you have to be, yeah. you have to catch them sometimes you know and then right. take another look because uh, sometimes you get surprises yeah. well that's it it's, it's sort of a happy accident i know that some of my best work mm. um, that i reproduced and sold uh, were uh they were demos mm -hmm. you know that i hadn't even had any intention mm. you know at all there was no preconception whatsoever it was mm. just i was doing something and next thing i know i'm looking and i go wow that really sings and, and we've talked about that too you know you can make a hundred a thousand different pieces but only one will sing yeah. one has that special element that people respond to hopefully more than one well thousand. hopefully <laughs> But in the beginning, I think that's the case when you're finding yourself, you know, and I think that, you know, it's true that artists really come into themselves, they come into their own once they have a few years of experience, mm -hmm. you know, because I think it takes that to really develop, you know, what um, an authentic identity, I think, is, is what it is. Right, the and, and a looseness to be able to... Mm -hmm. And the freedom to just let things happen instead of attempting to control mm -hmm. because, you know, in our society today, everything is, is really based on control. Mm -hmm. You want an outcome, a specific outcome based on A, B, C, D, mm -hmm. and then you're going to have a guaranteed finished product. And, and this is not the case with art. Not always, no. No, no, not always. And well, with mold making or things like that, you know, the technical aspects. But even then, you can have some happy accidents. I remember. That's true. I remember pouring a bronze one time that um, you know put the did the mold everything you know and and the whole uh, uh, ceramic shell and the whole bit and this thing was perfect and expecting this great bronze to come out and you know the whole inside of the piece is a piece about this big and the whole inside of the piece there was a lot of inclusion mm -hmm. and so it was almost hollow but it had, looked like it had nuggets mm -hmm. so it was just, but it happened to fall at like the heart. Oh. and the liver, <laughs> different yeah. areas of the piece. And, you know, I looked at it and I went, oh, my God, I don't know. It's kind of different. And somebody else said, wow, that's magnificent. You know, and it helped me look at it in mm -hmm. a different way. Yeah. But, it's you know. true. I, I, do, I do some things that are real free and uh, uh, sand castings that I do, you do backwards. And, and, yeah, and, right. and, st and you don't really see it until... It, you turn it over the next day, but they're free. They're right. real loose and free. And yeah. uh, that's important to do sometimes. Well, it is, I think. And uh, I think, you know, I mean, you, like with your Earth Angels, you've been doing this for a number of years now, mm -hmm. 20 years, yeah. haven't you? Mm -hmm. About 20 yeah. years? More than that. And that's a really successful item. That, you know, piece, you created several pieces, and you have a number of, of women's faces that you're using. Right, sure. And they're beautiful. You know, they're really wonderful. I have a yard full of them. <laughs> Great.
great. <laughs> Over the years, you know. I, I haven't missed too many meals in the right. last 20 years. Amador County has been good to me. Yeah, I'll say that. yeah. It has, it's been a good home, I think, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah. real good. I, I love it up been, here. Yeah, well, you know, it's, it's difficult to try to move back into a city after you've got a taste of... I can't imagine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I spent 20 years in, uh, in Oakland. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. down there it, was, there, it was a real fight to pay the rent. Yeah. You know, I didn't have that low overhead where, right. where I got up here. So right. <clears throat> there was a struggle to pay the rent. And uh, so consequently got off track a lot and couldn't do what I yeah. wanted to do. Well, that, that's the pull. Yeah, that, that's the pull. And, and it's like, okay, well, do I pay the rent and, or do... You know, do I stick with this that I'm on, you know, I'm on this track? And, and I think that's the struggle that artists, that all artists that are really dedicated to art for art's sake. Um, I know you were one of, at the time in the 1990s when we were in Sutter Creek, you were one of four artists that I knew, of all the artists that I've ever known or at that time knew, that were making a living solely from the income of art. Mm -hmm. which was a huge thing to say, and I had no idea how huge that was. I, I feel lucky every day. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Very lucky. So, anyway, when we come back, we're going to see some pictures, some actual photographs of, of your work in the studio, and we have a self-portrait, and we've got some wonderful things coming up for you folks, so we'll see you in just a few minutes. You're watching Amador County's local television network, TSPN. Now back to Art and Culture with Kathleen Ball on TSPN. All righty, welcome back, folks. And uh, we're going to go into the second segment here and, and show some actual artwork. Um, we were just finishing up a story that I guess we probably better finish. <laughs> we were talking about, uh, you know, happy accidents and whatnot and uh, talking about a, a particular bus that... Uh, got put in a kiln, and the whole top of the head blew off. <laughs> anyway, what I did with that thing was mount it on a uh, wooden uh, base mm -hmm. and put a light up through it and took the shards mm -hmm. and, and glued them, you know, so they looked like they were coming out of the head and just painted it all kinds of off-the-wall colors and put this light up inside there and called it the last semester. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, you should it have seen great. your daughter's piece when I did, I carved her face. Yeah. I didn't, she has the long straight yes. hair, really long straight hair, and, yeah. I, and instead of chiseling and carving all that hair, what I did, mm -hmm. I drilled a million holes right. and put pine needles, long pine I needles in. I saw that, Did yeah. you see it when I it was a fro? That. Yeah, That yeah. was crazy. Yeah, it was. It was, it was just amazing. <laughs> it's like the patience that went into that. Because I wondered how you were going to get well, you know, all that hair. Well, it would have been a lot hair. harder to carve it. So I yeah. made that yeah. and steamed it back for hair and then made yeah. the mold. But yeah, that was, you know, just the things that you come up with, you know, as, as artists. I mean, you know, you, 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 you just, you have a problem and you have to solve it. Yeah. You know, and that's the thing. And, and it can be very unconventional, you know, the way you end up solving so we're going we're gonna to show some slides here. Um, our first slide um, that's coming up is, uh, is your studio. So this is the front of your studio, and it's just before you come into Pine Grove on Highway 88. So uh, you want to talk a little bit about the move and how you found this place and whatnot? And oh, well, I, I was in an old converted barn in Sutter Creek, and it, it uh, started to fall down, actually. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, right. So I looked around and found some property. I, I looked around and I was looking for property that was off the road, hidden down yeah. a long road, and right, so I right. could just get lost. And then I realized I needed to be near the highway. Yeah, exactly. I, yeah. I don't wholesale work much more. I, mm. People come to my shop and buy. Mm -hmm. So I needed to be on the highway, and I found this place. And uh, it's, right. it was perfect. The house is on the hill, and down below is mm. the, it was a two-and-a-half-car garage that I've converted. And right. Yeah. It, it works well. And it's magnificent. Me. You know, you, you've got a gallery space, and then you have a workshop space, and, you know, it works really well. So we're going to come into go into the next slide here and show, this is, again, this is still the exterior. It's the outside, and you have, these are the earth angels that we were talking about earlier. 
And you've done a number of things with these. They're not just mounted on the stone where you can actually put them on the ground, but you also, you want to talk about the, uh, the faces that you came up with. And you also did uh, uh, pot planter, uh, hanging planters, too. Yeah. Well, they're, uh, they're friends and neighbors, basically, that I use for models. Right, and, uh, right. Pretty much just carve the original, and uh, yeah. I make a mold of the face also, and uh, right. use that uh, just as a face. I sell right. them. People do all sorts of things with them. Right. But uh, the angels are uh, garden pieces, basically. I like yeah. them in the garden. Yeah. But enough people like them, and I make them reasonably priced, so. Uh, yeah that I haven't missed too many meals. Right. <laughs> well, the process is, is, is fascinating for anybody, you know, who's interested, but um, you're actually casting women's or girls' faces um, using the alginate rubber. Is that right? Are you still I use using alginate the alginate? And, uh, basically, alginate I use. Uh, years ago, I used to cast, uh, I used to teach and with, uh, I was doing some kids' faces in, right. in plaster. We were yes using plaster and uh, plaster got into one of the little girl's eyes and she started to you know it started to irritate her she scared the, the heck out of me so we washed it off and cleaned it she was fine but after that I started to use alginate which is yeah. what the dentist uses right so it's mm -hmm. uh, totally safe and non-toxic right. it's used in ice cream and Mm -hmm. Makeup and stuff like that, but right? And it's used. It's basically made out of algae, so it's a it's a completely organic um, it's a seaweed, substance. Yes. Seaweed, yeah, yeah, right, yeah. But then then you <clears throat> you do a, a, a that's a negative piece, and then you cast a positive into it, and back and forth, and, right. and make your molds. But uh, uh, so I use that. I use a lot of different processes, but th that's mm -hmm. one of the interesting ones. And uh, it, you know, it's uh, it's it's mold, casting and and mold making is is an art in itself almost. Yes, it is. I mean, yeah, and you I actually know. apprenticed both my sons, apprenticed with you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. So they both learned the the mold making trade well, actually. Or they the, they did mostly casting mm -hmm. the, the pieces which are cast in a uh, right. faux stone, and uh, right. so. Super fancy mortar, basically, right, what right. it amounts to. With but they got to see the whole process, and that's something yeah. that stuck with them their whole lives. Oh, yeah. You know, my son is in the automotive. One of my sons, is, mm -hmm. well, actually, they both do automotive stuff, mm -hmm. but um, is making things out of molds, and he still remembered oh. the concept, oh, okay. you know, the mold. Good. So he's mm -hmm. using that, you know, which is really great. Great. Mm -hmm. so, so let's move to the next slide. We're going to show a few... Um, we have some more. This is the, the, the other side of, of your property. Um, and we've, we've got a flat piece here. Now, this is kind of an interesting piece because it, although this piece is hanging, there also can be used for stepping stones. Oh, yeah. And uh, I found that really interesting. Oh, that, that piece I did kind of, it was just kind of whimsical. Uh, people, uh, kids, let me out, let me out. It's like a porthole into the earth. Right, right. Kind of for the stepping stone. It was a just crazy piece, but I'm. But it's those. a fun piece, and and the faces actually look like they're they're kind of smashed I a little. I think your daughter's on that one. Too. Yeah, yeah, she's on that one too, and and, and it looks like they're kind of trying to climb out of this hole. So right. it, it's a fun piece. It's a really fun piece, and and uh, and these you also submerged into the bottom of different rivers and things too, and and uh, bodies of water. Which I thought was a, a really unique idea. Yeah, I, I put them here and there. I mean, mm -hmm. I have one thing Instead I've always done is saying. when I find the, the original stone, yeah. which, you know, I search for a longer, long stone that has some movement to it and so forth, I always take one of the angels back and put it where I got the original stone. Oh, really? So, yeah, like a goat rock on the, up the coast or something, I've taken yeah. pieces and left them where I got the original stone. That's right. kind of fun. I don't know how long they last there, but... Well, you know, it, that's not the point. Yeah. You know? yeah. But, yeah, uh, yeah I've, I use those in a lot of different ways. The, the faces I'll yeah. put into, take the bark, uh, cut a whole bark out of a tree and put them in, and it grows around the face. And stuff. Yeah. It's fun. Yeah. 
It's but, fun uh, to play with it once you've got it yeah. sort of mastered, basically. Sure. You know, then then you have the freedom to play with it a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So let's go into the next slide, please. And um, this uh, this is actually my daughter. This was Jacqueline's face. Oh, yeah. And uh, the next slide, please. And so this was uh, this was actually one of the the pieces that stands on the ground, mm. free, you know, stands freely on right. the ground. And you can you can actually submerge these. I have one in in uh, in our pond, and then I've got a couple others out that are out in the garden. I'm, I've Sorry. used her a few times to to make a fountain where I put a yeah. copper tube in it where she right kind of a street. and that's another interesting thing that you know you just got it's so versatile you know you've done so many things you with get, you get to play well I remember I remember calling you one time I had the gallery in Cedar Creek and and uh, it was an international show that I was doing and I had artwork coming in from different countries mm -hmm. and this one gal brought in a piece um, she brought in a couple of suitcases actually they were wooden boxes and crates and we couldn't open them because they had a different type of um, you had to use it, I don't know what it was, but some sort of a tool to open them up. And I remember calling you and saying, Thomas, can you make a tool? Well, how long do I have? And I said, about 20 minutes. <laughs> and he came up with this tool and we got into these boxes and we got the, everything put up. And we were getting ready for the opening reception. And it was the last thing on the planet we figured we weren't going to be able to open these boxes. <laughs> But it was a good example, mm -hmm. you know, of, of uh, you know, just that, that quick thinking. Problem and, solving. You know what I mean? Problem solving. Yes. Exactly. Probably problem solving. So we'll, we'll, uh, we'll go into the next piece here. And um, she's got a price on her head. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. So uh, next, All next slide. All arts for sale. Here's the, this is the oh, one yeah. we were talking about that we saw earlier that was on the fence, and now this is the one that's embedded in actually into the ground. The, so. the porthole to inner earth. Right, the porthole in the earth. And uh, next slide, please. Okay, here's another um, example of, you know, what you can do with these pieces. Obviously, these are set up um, for sale and for, ex you know, ex exhibit them. But you can see, you can just imagine what you can do with plants and things and, and uh, you know, put them all over the place. Next slide, please. Now this is um, to the side of your studio as you're heading up towards the house. This is actually the pond. Can we see the next slide, please? There's, uh, you built this. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Put it in last year, waterfalls. And there's a balance piece in there, which I'm, into a lot of balance pieces. I'm a Libra, so mm -hmm. uh, it's hard to see, but... Uh, we have the a, next slide, please? Oh, there we go. That's a better shot. Okay. Okay, it's got a bronze stick uh, balanced on a... Uh, with, a with a rock balanced on top. It all moves around in the breeze. But, right. Uh, and this is a beautiful... It's a very calming... Kind um, of zenish. Yeah, it's just, it's just a very calming, very serene space. Um, that is right around the studio and, and the whole area is just really really nice to visit you know for people who want to come up and look at the pieces and you know for to buy them and, and also just enjoy the space it's just just a beautiful space so, so anyway when we come back we have uh, quite a few more pictures okay. that we're going to show and some of your early work and um, some of the things you know some of the other things that you've done okay. so yeah we've got uh, you've got tools and different things that you've made and just all sorts of stuff. So we'll see you in a few minutes, folks, and um, we're going to have some more pictures for you. You're watching Amador County's local television network, TSPN. And now back to Art and Culture with Kathleen Ball on TSPN. Welcome back, folks, and uh, it's Art and Culture with Kathleen Ball and my guest, Thomas Bow, tonight. So we're going to continue um, looking at some of his work, and uh, we have a couple of slides. Um, now, this was the piece we were talking about earlier. Oh, yeah, this is a, a close-up of this piece, and there's actually a little, is that a gecko or a lizard? Yeah, a little sort? bronze lizard on there. You can see it moving there. Right. Just the slightest breeze moves it. But uh, 
Yeah. I do some larger scale ones too. This is a that's this is a small one for the pond, but uh, they're they're just kind of zenny, very relaxing sort of things and balance. This is about balance. Yeah, they balance. Yeah. And, and move. They move in the slightest breeze. Kinetic. Can. Yeah. But uh, uh, I don't I don't know if it has to, much to do. I'm a Libra, and that's the, the, the scales. But uh, I I like things that balance. Things that, yeah, exactly. Uh, Things that balance. I started a piece today, uh, just rudimentarily roughed it, but uh, it's going to be a long, you know, like 30 foot piece that yeah. just from one point over here, and this, mm -hmm. you know, it'll be fine. Yeah, yeah. So it's exciting to start new pieces, new mm -hmm. work, and go off in a different direction. It's, right. it's exciting. I think that's one of the most exciting things. I'm getting ready to start a, a ceiling mural. I've been oh. conceiving the idea for a while and per letting it percolate, you know, that mm -hmm. process of percolation. It, it's, it hasn't come out yet, but it's all, you're working on it. You mm -hmm. know, it's like you're working on it subconsciously, oh, yeah. and then the next thing you know, it just kind of flies out. Well, I've found know? that there, there's been periods of uh, time when I'm not producing a lot of artwork, mm -hmm. but uh, I've found that I wasn't necessarily... Uh, wasting time or something. I was there were yeah. pieces kind of an working incubation in my head. period. Yeah, you know, it, so I, gestation. I was busy, but I wasn't physically doing the work. Right. And then when it came mm -hmm. time to do the work, boom, it would just flow it just right, flows out, right out. Know? Yeah, and uh, I think actually I need some of those times that. Uh, well, you do. I find it producing. necessary. I used to. I used to f fear those times when I was right. younger, because I used to think, "Oh, I'm not. I'm not doing anything. Right. You know, I'm not creating." But then. You know, after like a month or so of that, then all of a sudden, you know, I'm creating painting five paintings. You know, right. this just recently happened. You know, mm -hmm. just just not too long ago, I painted a whole series of paintings, mm -hmm. um, and now working on this, you know, this ceiling mural. But um, you know, it, I think that's the process, and we get to we get more comfortable with that as mm -hmm. as we, uh, you know, we develop and, and sort of get a little older. Exactly. You know, as an artist, you know. Mm -hmm. so. Exactly. Um, but that's, you know, that's the process. Can we have the next slide, please? And, and uh, we'll take a look at some more. This is a bench that you can sit on outside where the pond, oh, yeah, where your pond is. Truck springs. Yeah, and it's actually on springs, so it's, um, yeah. you know, an, uh, another idea of balance and, and uh, comfort. And next slide, please. Now this is uh, this is another piece that you have kind of take you know not just cast but gone a little further with and done some on um, hand painting and and whatnot with and yeah, is it stains she or painting? Yeah, she has a copper uh, headdress or a uh, band. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. I, yeah, I I play right. play with different surfaces and whatnot. Yeah, isn't it, you know, textural qualities of things fascinate me. And, you know, I love mm -hmm. rusty things and recreating those colors mm -hmm. and right. textures. And, right. you know, this is something exploring media is so exciting. Mm -hmm. I, I don't, you, know, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's just, it's really a treat to, to talk with you about these things because you're one of the people in the world that understands what I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> when I'm talking about, you know, exploring texture, textural media and playing with, you know, playing with different things. Like you were talking about playing with different rubbers and metals and, you know, just the things that we come across um, in the trade, you know. Right. Well, so. sometimes I get it a little too sidetracked, but, uh, well, uh, yeah. you know, I, I love to experiment with different uh, techniques and different right. processes and stuff. And see where they lead. Sometimes you know? I don't get real far into one, but, yeah. uh, I, you know, learn it and use use it in an aspect of the work and right right so can we have the, the next slide please ah this is a masterpiece <laughs> oh yes i, I built is, a, yeah this i is built fabulous. a motorcycle that i i consider kinetic artwork <laughs> yeah. kinetic sculpture next slide please but it's uh copper and brass riveted but i use different techniques here i uh for instance, on the little world there on the right side of the tank, I used uh, acid etch. I'd never done that before. I got right. nitric acid and, uh, you know, did, a, did an acid etch thing. And, uh, mm -hmm. oh, I sandblasted some lettering on the thing. It's, you know, I used a bunch of different techniques. 
right. that I had never used before. R Reposé with the copper in, in a big leather pillow and beading on it. And right. So that led into a few other types of projects, you know, other than mm -hmm. the, the motorcycle, but... Uh, Can we have the next slide, please? Yeah, so here, here's another example of, um, it's resin, this is resin casting. Yeah, this, uh, this is the window to my little gallery. I have a little gallery that full of a kind of old artwork, a retrospective, more or less, a little skinny little gallery. But uh, this is the sign for it. It's a buffalo jawbone. I embed, I cast a lot of clear resins right. and embed objects and things in them and make these little scenes and whatnot. And this is, uh, this is on the front door to the gallery. Right. So, uh, we have the next slide, please. Now, this is some of your early work. This, now we're in, moving into the retrospective that you spoke about. These were some of your early pieces while you were in the ceramics. Yeah, I did this one in Florida. This is about two feet in diameter, and uh, the, the handles are mangrove trees with faces for uh, foliage. Right. Sort of, and uh, just a big serving platter. But uh, I did a lot of... Uh, I threw a lot of functional work, but always there was some sculptural stuff usually added to mm -hmm. it, or it was a, became sculptural where I th would throw cylinders, cut them up, and build things with them. Right. Uh, I didn't do a lot of uh, like teapots and that sort of right, yeah. stuff, but uh, if I yeah. did, it was there was something extra on it. I I, I don't know. I, I can't stay away from the sculptural part. Right. Yeah, I think I think that's something uh, that we share. I gra that just grabs me. I can't create something just function. It, it's got to have some aspect to it. Yeah, I mean, is, a functional uh, piece can be gorgeous and it can have be. perfect form, yeah. and you know, yeah. it's all that's that's a lovely thing. Right. I just have to start twisting them and moving. Me too. <laughs> you know? Me too. I've got to start twisting the clay or doing something with it. You know, I remember some Broken of the first it. raku. Pot. They were just pots, you know, coiled pots that I made, and mm -hmm. and I had to push the sides out just to see what would happen with the clay, because I wanted to see how it looked when it dried that way, yeah. you know, and how it <clears throat> when it went through the raku process, and then you know one thing led to the other. Well. But it was all about experimentation and exploring the media, and mm -hmm. I think you know wanting to know what. Okay, so if I do this, and I can use that for something later, mm -hmm. you know, and it, and you keep all this information, sure. try to keep all the information in mm -hmm. your head. Well, Raku is a, a method of pouring uh, or of uh, firing ceramics where you take the piece out of the kiln while yep. it's red hot yep. and reduce it in a carbon atmosphere like a garbage can full of sawdust or something. Exactly. But it, Raku lends itself to a, to a discovery and innovative yes. uh, uh, aspect too because it's it's so f it's so kind of free and it happens quickly and yeah. uh, instead of waiting two days for a kiln to cool and stuff you're seeing it right there and putting right. another piece in the kiln and right. so ra i did a lot of raku i had a lot of fun with raku yeah, yeah and you, you know and then building the kilns and things and getting into that aspect of it you know i built i remember building a raku kiln out of a five gallon drum oh. mm -hmm. and putting burners up underneath creating a base and putting the burners directly up underneath and lining it with kiln wool you know mm -hmm. and it worked great it worked yeah. really good mm -hmm. But it's that instantaneous, you know, you get it right away, although there's that element of surprise yes. because depending on how you, you know, I just poured on randomly, poured on some of my glazes and things, the Raku glazes, which have a lot of metals in them. So the coppers and the blues mm -hmm. and the greens and things come to the surface. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you never know exactly what you're going to get. Right. And so it's almost like it used to be when you're having a child before, you know, the ultrasound... <laughs> You didn't know if it was going to be a boy or a girl. Mm. Well, now, you know, that's kind of the element of Raku and, and some of the, uh, like, Onagoma kilns mm -hmm. and, you know, pit kilns and things. Um, there's that element of surprise. That yeah. you, the unknown, <clears throat> that you're birthing something that's never been here before. You going, know? going back to being aware of, uh, of what, you, what you're doing as you're doing it. I, I, one time I fired <coughs> a very large kiln load of porcelain. Yeah. And I had preconceived what I wanted it to look like with the right. glaze I used. Right. And when I opened the kiln, it was totally different yeah. than I expect mm -hmm. than I was looking for. Mm -hmm. So I, in my master's work, I was getting ready for my master's show. 
I, as I emptied the kiln, I broke each piece into the garbage can. I saved one piece and yeah. put it on my shelf. Yeah. And I, looking at it later, I realized it was beautiful. That's what I wanted. I wanted yeah. that surface. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, I didn't, I didn't stop long enough to look for a minute, as I should have. But with Raku, it was kind of a similar thing. You have fun along the way. Oh, and it, yeah. One glaze can turn out very differently if it the temperature is different. And in a kiln, you know, when you, you combine, especially with greens and reds, I don't know if you run into this, but you put the greens and the reds in the same kiln. They can be, they can you change. You get mm -hmm. some wild things happen, mm -hmm. you know, and you have, you know, you have a... a piece that you put nothing but green glazes mm. on and nothing but red on this other one but they you put flash. them in the same kiln and mm -hmm. you know you've got some things going on that you don't expect right. you know can we have the next slide please so here's another um oh those are i call them whiskey jugs they were uh thrown and cast uh pieces that i fume glazed uh, yeah. okay kind of like salt glazing Similar to that. Great. Okay. But uh, I, I did a whole series of these too. They were about okay. two, a foot and a half tall or so. Okay. Well, we're going to come show some next, uh, some more slides in just a couple minutes. So we'll see you in a couple minutes, folks. Thank you very much. Good. You're watching Amador County's local television network, TSPN. And now back to Art and Culture with Kathleen Ball on TSPN. Welcome back, folks. And um, we have Thomas Bow with us tonight, and we're going to look at the rest of his artwork. On, can we have the next slide, please? There we go. This, is, this oh, shows some, some versatility that we were talking about. Yeah, I, I make percussion instruments and uh, occasionally different drums, different shapes and sizes. And uh, mm. and there's that twisting motion, again, that we were talking yeah. about, you know, the playing with the media. You know, this is uh, these are wood with um, animal skin tops. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Yeah, they sound good. They sound good. But ne uh, Next slide, please. There's yeah, another that's, example. That's a twister. Mm -hmm. I call them twisters. Kind of freehand them through the bandsaw and... But uh, once again, they sound pretty good, the congas. Right. And you play these too, actually, right? I, uh, yes, I, a little bit. Yeah. Next slide, please. A dabble. And... Uh, oh, a heart tambourine. Uh, the, 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 the hide is held in with thorns. Right, right. <laughs> into interesting. The, into the wooden shape. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, interesting, you know, concepts and contrast. <laughs> Next slide, please. This is a self-portrait. Can you tell us a little bit about who did this, actually? A guy did this piece in Oakland. Uh, he was pretty amazing. He did this piece in 15 minutes, flat, yeah. from start. Yeah, that, that's what it just amazed me he, about. He, uh, you sit down, and he just wails away at the canvas. I thought he was just starting the background and roughing it in. Uh -huh. And uh, we stopped to take a smoke break, and it was done. Yeah, and he, yeah. Uh, yeah, it was really a surprise. Really he, amazing. He, uh, he really he's doing the only portraits, and he and he and he and he's, his studio is lined with hundreds of them. He, yeah. he does them in 10, 15 minutes each one. Pretty amazing, really. Totally amazing. Next slide, please. That is. So this is uh, oh, this is a metal. A, that's a bronze uh, face. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A metal kind of, piece, and, and you've done, you've kind of tweaked this. These are one of the faces that you use for yeah, the Earth Angels. I elongated it, uh, but I like metal. I like glass. I like yeah. to cast glass. I've been fortunate enough to have a friend in the Bay Area that has a large glass shop, and yeah. I get to go in and pour his uh, dirty glass right, occasionally right. Uh, when, when he gets his, <clears throat> his uh, cauldrons of glass get, dirt in them or too many little bubbles he, right. he, mm -hmm. he can't do his fine uh fine goblets and stuff so i get to go in and pour it into sand molds yeah, and yeah. dump it on the floor and into my molds and i'd stuff. like to go with you <laughs> it's, it's a it really a lot i of love fun. to play with glass and yeah. i think there's you know there, there's something about um fire there's an element of heat and fire that that uh 
you know, when you pour bronze and you work with kilns I and things it. like that, it's a... Um, almost uh, sort of a, a pyramid <laughs> verging on, you know what I'm saying? Pouring, um, pouring metal is one of the f most fun things. It really, br it really brings you to a sense of reverence for fire. I mean, I think mm -hmm. you, you really, I came away with a real reverence for fire after working with kilns and pouring bronze right. and things that, and glass, um, you know, just playing with those elements and things. I mean, you develop a, a real sense of respect and reverence for the materials. Yes. Yeah, the glass is fun. Mm -hmm. You pour a big bunch of glass and you can work it while mm -hmm. it's still hot. It's, it's great. You can uh, manipulate it around with, with gloves or tools. And, right. And then it, as it cools, you know, boom. It's, yeah, it's just and it really, just it's, it's, stops. It's fun. Yeah, you're right. It really is a fun medium. It's, it's an expensive fun. medium to play with. Yeah, right. It's my, definitely my, expensive. My, yeah. my, my friend shuts his kiln down and his glass furnace is down every several years to rebuild them. Mm -hmm. His gas bill last year was 45,000 mm -hmm. bucks. <laughs> so wow, that's a pretty penny. Well, that's certainly not, you know, it doesn't come in the category of low over. <laughs> yeah. Next yeah. slide, please. Here's a here's another example of a resin casting and a combination. This is a metal Yeah, piece the face here. is pewter and mm -hmm. then uh, the resin and the kind of a bad hair day. Uh, <laughs> it's it's lit from well, there's, this actually lights up. You, you can see the cord in, in the yeah, slide here. You can actually see the cord, and, and this actually lights up. Her so hair lights up, yes. It can be used as a night light type of, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. you know, nice, nice, uh, subtle yeah. lighting. It's a fun piece, yeah. Next slide, please. This is a nice piece. Uh, that's another one. I added a few things, the headband and mm -hmm. some hair and just played, and then I painted her. Right. Did a, sort of a little bit of a clown look or uh, well it has a very aboriginal strange. sort of um, appeal you know it, it's it almost looks like it's inspired by a multitude of in of indigenous you yeah. know sort of influences it's it's one, it yeah. was one of those pieces that I just get free and, yeah. and I I don't care about a lot of them if, right if, just if play I, could, I can play I, I do five pieces to put on the shop and then one I play with and I don't care about it and sometimes they come out great and sometimes right. they don't. And sometimes they don't, right. But, uh, Next slide, please. That was one of those. Yeah, here's another one in the, along the same yeah, that's vein. Her daughter, same, same deal. I'm just kind of mm -hmm. in the sand of punching different stuff and then mm -hmm. uh, that's the... And these are beautiful wall pieces, and you just, they're really, really nice. Next slide, please. It's fun. Now, this is a little different. These, um, these are some, th this was uh, part the of the, the handle of a... A, a sword a, that right. I, I made. Uh, I, st I make, do weapons, too. I'm, I don't know why I get into weapons. I made the blade out of a chainsaw bar, mm -hmm. and that's a piece of antler that I carved. Next slide, please. We can see uh, an axe, too, which is... Um, yeah, that's... Uh, I did the Bay of Breakers years ago, and I had a tribe. I got a bunch of people from this big art shop, and we mm -hmm. all got together and put skins on and stuff and did this, did the run of the Bay of Breakers. Yeah. And after that, I, I made a spear for myself, uh, and uh, but I had fun doing it. And then so I started making all these uh, caveman sort of... Uh, Mm -hmm. And they, they do, they look like they came right straight <laughs> out of the caves in, in you know, Lascaux yeah. or somewhere in France <clears throat> that we were talking about earlier. Yeah. But I cast the bronze and then, uh, you know, do the leather work and the bone. Was Next slide, please. Yeah, here's an example of, uh, you did all the woodwork on this. Yeah, right? I carved a, a, a rattlesnake, you can't quite see the, the, the fang is broken on the, this one, but it's a, a snake. Mm -hmm. Handle mm -hmm. it was a kit, a kit gun, and I just carved the handle. Uh, next slide, please. It's a good example of getting waylaid. Uh, this is now. A, this is yeah. a this is an interesting piece. Can we actually have the next slide? Yeah, there's, there's a close up of this. Um, there's actually a motorcycle embedded in this. That's a guy riding out of a firefight in uh, in a village in Vietnam, and it's the cranium of a skull. That's right. what it is, actually. You can't see from this angle, but... Uh, Next slide, please. Maybe we can... There we go. Okay. Now we can see the slide, uh, the front of it a little bit yeah, better. Yeah, the, the face, yeah. 
Yeah, these are some strange pieces. I don't know where they well, came from. Well, it's interesting <laughs> because it's like, you know, the goings on in the mind of an artist, I mean, or whatever. I mean, you can interpret it in a lot of different ways, of course. However, you know, your personal perspective or whatever your mm -hmm. history you bring into it. But, um, you know, I love the aspect of the motorcycle and, and also, you know, the elongated skull, which is interesting because mm -hmm. these elongated skulls are found throughout the world and, mm -hmm. and they're, um, they're very rare. There's not a lot of them that mm -hmm. are still available or, you know, that are accepted in the geological, mm -hmm. archaeological record. So, um, can we have the next slide, please? Next slide, please. It's you. There we go. Here's another oh, um, another example of um, and this is a this is one that. Oh, that's a, a shark attack uh, happening in the guy's brain. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love this. There's a diver and a big shark biting him inside. I, yeah. I, I don't know where this one came from either, but. Uh, well, these are fun pieces. It goes back to my Florida days, I think. Yeah. You know, I've often said, um, you know, I'd pity the person that I could take my brain out and put it into their head. Yeah. <laughs> this is, this yeah. is what makes me laugh about it because I can totally relate to this. You know, I really, really understand this concept. The things that go on in the, in the brain of an artist, you know. Next slide, please. Is that the last slide? Oh, good. We're back okay. to this uh, the beginning. Good. Yeah, I want to do one of those pieces, uh, the skull pieces, as a hologram mm -hmm. with a hologram in yeah. where you, when you come up in front of the piece and look at it, you look in and see yourself in the. Oh, really? In the piece, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But it's and put it in a like an old oak case, like an old museum case, and glass right. and oak. So, right, and, you know, yeah. and, and these, you know, this is the imagination and, and the creativity that comes with um, with being an artist, you know, I think it's, it's sort of a, I've always thought of it as sort of a, um, a double-edged sword, you know, the creative process is, is such a wonderful thing, but then you carry that with you in everything else you do in the That's world, true. you know, yes. so it's, a, it's sort of a, it's sort of a fine line to walk sometimes. You know. Or you try it all over the place, left and right, and back and forth, and cover the whole thing, you know, yeah. a little bit well, here you know, and it, there. But it, leads, it leads you to places like, you know, we were talking earlier, like you, you go down to Belize um, once a year, and mm. you've, you've poured rubber right out of trees and done all sorts of wonderful things, right. you know, that most people, you know, you don't get a chance or you don't think to do these things. Mm -hmm. Would you mm -hmm. talk just a little bit about, okay, that... Um, Oh, I, I like to go and work on the beach, pour it, yeah. pour, uh, go to get cement and pour into, make sand molds on the beach with bones and stuff right. in it. And uh, yeah. that's fun. Right. I do that. Well, you know, it's just been so great having you here tonight. And well, I want to, you. you know, share this with our guests at home. You, know, you can be reached, Thomas Bell. Number is 916 716 5053, and he's on Highway 88. And uh, we'll see you next month, folks. Uh, thank you for joining us, and uh, have a wonderful evening. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching Art and Culture with Kathleen Ball on TSPN.